This is the Deposition of Christ by Raphael in the Borghese Gallery in Rome, and I will discuss the aspects of this composition which serve as an underlying backbone of structural support, declaring a great masterwork of design excellence, as well as testifying to an artist capable of great human sensitivity and feeling. I'll begin with Raphael's masterful simplicity in using a linear grid to subdivide a square charged with dynamic energy and sacred meaning. To begin with this dynamic energy and sacred meaning, I notice the use of something very simple, a vertical line which subdivides a square into two quadrants. In the left quadrant we see a dynamic grouping and energy with Christ falling down with being supported by various figures and on the right side we see Mary swooning and falling down being supported by various figures just in this very basic division we see a keystone between the left and the right side of the painting another very basic division of a square in a tic-tac-toe four square kickball type game we've got now four quadrants with this great energy up here opposing this falling down area under here and again just genius use of these basic divisions let me make that a little bit lower so it's directly halfway. Now, what do you see here? All the heads are organized in this upper quadrant. What do you see here? Let me make this a little bit more exactly halfway here. What do you notice about the wound on Christ's foot? It connects exactly with this hinge point of this foot. And if you look a little bit closer, the tibia bone which is a great supporting bone of tension right beneath this columnar-like knees and that tibia bone also echoing that one. The two columns of the leg supporting legs are here and here. So from the beginning we've got four lines and a great meaning employed in just four divisional spaces. It's our fifth line, grouping the head of Christ all the way to the left quadrant of this painting, creating a dynamic force. How does it get answered on this side? The head of Mary answers with this dynamic energy and force opposing both sides of the painting. So in the very beginning, you got to tic-tac-toe-like grid structure that Raphael uses in countless ways to organize a fundamental meaning to his space, spatial organization, and pictorial direction. I'm going to move on to the next layer of Raphael's structural principle, his structural strategy the diagonal interlocking directional forces it's kind of a insane grouping of lines but once you start getting into the just strategy that Raphael employs to subdivide the square in yet another way you just realize his genius and mastery and his great sensitivity and feeling see this arm strongly directing your eye toward the corner of this painting and the ear hugging the line of that angle as it heads up to the upper right hand corner opposed by this strong diagonal no accident here that Mary's face and nose is cut exactly on that line and that Peter or John or Mark's ear here is just resisting that line and the next disciple's head is falling slightly below the line. So there's just more energy going on in the diagonals. And let's see if we can see, find an echo of that main diagonal. Yes, there's this strong one echoed by that secondary 
and perhaps this is a third echo here which even catches itself on the edge of that fold and going the other way do we see any other opposing diagonals I sense his arms going this way his other arm is echoing there and Mary's gaze connecting to the head of Christ all echoing this strong main diagonal line likewise we see this line connecting with the back echoing the main thrust there we see a subliminal line here if you can see it going through the figures there connecting with the side of this leg going through there and directing us right into the front of this toe so there's these subliminal dynamic energies and thrust created with main diagonals and secondary diagonals and I want to point you to just a few more here I see this really important diagonal here opposed on the other side of the painting by that important diagonal likewise if you look at that grouping there's a diagonal there you get this toe which heads to that pinky toe so we have a container like form and if you follow these feet diagonals find a repose in a horizontal and these can even connect with a horizontal too so we have a container with these dynamic thrusting energies and I am just gonna highlight a couple more main diagonals which run through like a circuit through the painting and you can find key points such as this and just run your eye where does it lead to I see something connecting this way and where does that lead me to I'm gonna make this a slightly different color where does that lead me to over here here's pink okay I see it connecting through there another main diagonal this head there's a crisscross right there even connecting up through the edge of that rock so there's this structural brilliance and genius in these diagonals and their thrusts counter thrusts and directional energies that no accident that this is organized like a chief architect who's building a temple or a building to stand for the next thousand years in this 72 by 69 inch painting and we're gonna move on to another genius aspect of structural organization which is the block like mass organization if you can look a little bit closer at the figures you will notice there's the drawing this block like underlying structure of basic forms and here's the painting again and there's the block like mass organization and even without the painting this block like mass organization is full of beauty in the way that the forms are interlapping and overlapping um, just I'm really getting excited about this uh, movement going on through this rhythm right here I'm gonna draw one of the main movements that is going on in this block like mass which is this infinity symbol so there's a structural arc that's pull the painting back up another layer to the composition that he's finding within the diagonals within the verticals within the horizontals and within all the st structure of the figures again I see also this overall unified circle within the square which is pretty amazing and it's the circle is obviously being divided in half as we saw the square was divided in half and it's diving down these energies are diving down and here you can see Christ's energy diving down 
in this whipping of Mary, diving down. And then you have opposing energies of this columnar-like leg pushing up. This columnar-like leg pushing up this way. This one pushing up this way. And then this arm resisting those energies that away. And there's just an infinite number of forces and directional energies, tensions and balances that Raphael is using in this incredibly beautiful way to create a masterwork that's been with us for 500 years and will likely be here for 500 more. So I just wanted to open you up to a little bit of the underlying structure of the Deposition of Christ by Raphael. And thanks for listening.